Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and also hit that bell for updates on videos and shenanigans by Smarvy Smart. Now enjoy the video. What's going on guys? Smarvy Smart. We're back here with another video. And before I even start this video, I just have to say RIP to another legend, Rip Hunter. I mean, it really broke my heart because they had already killed off Martin Stein in the crisis. And now they're going to go and kill off another legend in Rip Hunter. But that's nevertheless. Guys... Let's go ahead and review this episode. So guys, get in on this. One thing that I really hate that Legends of Tomorrow does is they make their villains OD and seem like they're so powerful. But then when they actually go and fight them, they make the villains seem very weak. They did it with, they totally disrespected Reverse Flash last season. This guy created, what, a hundred time remnants? And you're telling me that they couldn't kill every last one of them in a in the snap of a finger i mean he could do that by himself he's a speedster and not only is he a speedster he's one of the greatest speedsters out there and they did the same thing with mollus it's like they made mollus into this very powerful demon who couldn't be stopped and it was like he was easily defeated in this episode like they spent the whole episode fighting over how they were going to defeat them themselves with the six totems they didn't even make it seem hard to defeat them they just made it seem like it was about focus no it should be more than about focus it should be about overpowering the villain and they didn't even have to hesitate to overpower him they do it every year with every villain they did it with vandal savage they did it with reverse flash and now they've done it with mala so next season i'm gonna challenge the legends to actually work hard to defeat a villain and not make it so easy i mean that's what the other arrowverse shows do you know they make it hard to defeat their villains but not the legends it's like they try to make it seem like it's hard for the entire season and then when it's time to fight the people it's, it's completely easy. So work on that. Now it's very rare for me to talk about a ship moment during this show, but am I the only one who actually shipped Nora Dart and Ray Palmer together? And my question is, if it was Damien Dart's fault that his daughter got possessed in the first place, why is she be taken why is she taken with the time bureau? Why does she have to be locked up? I mean, I know she pretty much was going to do what her dad said, but it wasn't entirely her fault that she got possessed by Mollus. But nevertheless, I hope next season they find a way to bring her back to the point where she's not in trouble anymore because they're, you can't just... The, the, the chemistry between Ray Palmer and Nora Dart was... It was pretty much better chemistry than any other ship I've seen on this show, pretty much. So... I mean, they already got rid of Hulk Girl, so Ray Palmer couldn't be with her. So you're going to keep bringing these women on the show. Why not have one of them stick with Ray? And I feel like that should be Nora Dark, especially the connection that they share throughout this season and throughout this episode, if you know what I'm saying. So one thing I will say, I really did miss Jax being on the team, and I'm glad that he actually came back and helped out. It's like, I really, like, legit really missed him. Like, the show did not feel the same without this guy up there. And I was glad when he, it's like when he came back, everything felt complete. But my question was, why did Ava go get a Jax five years into the future? I mean, he was talking about he had a kid and a baby mom. So, that was really confusing to me. But, nevertheless, Seeing him fight with the Legends again without any powers, I mean, why not make him a regular again? I know we have Wally and Constantine who are supposed to become regulars for next season. But, you know, I'm not very, I'm not very, you know, H-bent on him becoming a regular. I mean, just have him, like, show up every once in a while, you know, help the team out. But, I mean, it was really good to see him able to help without being Firestorm. Now, I actually have a theory on how he possibly be, could become Firestorm again, but that's for another video, and it has something to do with Ronnie. So, guys, if you are interested in how Jax could become Firestorm again, be sure to check that video out in the future, and be sure, you, be sure you're looking for it. So, one thing about me and Legends of Tomorrow, and maybe even a little bit of Supergirl, my expectations for these shows, like, to be, like, really good, you know, it's not really that high, but... 
I will say one thing. Legends of Tomorrow this season, it really exceeded my expectations of how good I thought it was going to be. And I think I rated maybe a 7 out of 10. I was really expecting to rate it probably a 5 out of 10 after watching the first episode. But like I said, like compared to like Flash and Arrow, Riverdale, and any of the other shows I watched, this isn't really one of the shows that I watched, you know, to pretty much like you know get too much entertainment i I watch it because it's a spinoff to the other dc shows like arrow and flash so actually it wasn't that bad this season i have to say the only thing i really didn't like but you know you have to do this to kind of keep things interesting was the fact that they killed off two of the main characters who started this whole thing you know with martin stein dying in a crisis at a crossover you know I wasn't very fond of that, but, you know, I didn't too much have a problem because, you know, it really, he, he, you know, a sacrifice is always needed. But I don't think that Rip Hunter needed to die, especially for a villain as, I don't know, as corny as Mollus, if I'm saying that correctly. So one thing that really kind of baffled me was the fact that they killed off two of the main characters who started the whole thing. And that's pretty much the only minus. But other than that, this season was not that bad. Actually, it exceeded the expectations that I had for it. But guys, I'm not going to talk a hole in your head. So I think this was the first time that I ever reviewed a Legends of Tomorrow episode. And I really can't wait for next season. And I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I can't wait for next season when Constantine becomes a regular. And hopefully Wally stays and helps out a lot. I know right now and I know in the future he's really going to be needed on Team Flash especially if Godspeed is supposed to be next year next season's villain but the fact that the legends use him and they actually value him a lot better than what Team Flash did I'm pretty sure he's going to be a regular but guys I hope you enjoy enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and for more videos about Legends of Tomorrow hit that subscribe button stay out of trouble guys